Hello, today is March 16th, 2023, and I would like to bring you this day in history. The United States Military Academy, the first military school in the United States, is founded by Congress for the purpose of educating and training young men in the theory and practice of military science. Located at West Point, New York, in the U.S. Military Academy is often simply known as West Point. Located on the high west bank of the New York's Hudson River, West Point was the site of Revolutionary Era fort building to protect Hudson River Valley from the British. In 1780, Patriot General Benedict Arnold the commander of the fort agreed to surrender West Point to British in exchange for 6,000 pounds. However, the plot was uncovered before it fell to British hands and Arnold fled to British for protection. Ten years after the establishment of the U.S. Military Academy in 1802, the growing threat of another war with Great Britain resulted in congressional action to expand the Academy's facilities and increase the West Point's Corps. Beginning in 1817, the U.S. Military Academy was recognized by the Superintendent Sylvanus Thayer, later known as the Father of West Point and the school became one of the nation's finest source of civil engineers. During the Mexican-American War, West Point graduates filled the leading ranks of the victorious U.S. forces, and with the outbreak of the Civil War, former West Point classmates regretfully lined up against another in the defense of their native states. In 1877, the first African-American cadet graduated from the U.S. Military Academy, and in 1976, the first female candidate was admitted. The Academy is now under general direction and supervision of the Department of the U.S. Army and has an enrollment of more than 4,000 students. Now I would like to bring you another This Day in History. Over a span of just 12 months, beginning April 1967, the duo of Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell enjoyed a string of four straight hits with some of the greatest love songs ever recorded at Motown Records. Sadly, only the first two of these four hits were released while Tammy Terrell was still well enough to perform them. In October 1967, just six months after the re release of the now classic Ain't No Mountain High Enough, Terrell collapsed on stage during a live performance at Virginia's Hampton Sydney College. Two and a half years later, on March 16, 1970, Tammy Terrell died of complications from a malignant brain tumor that caused her to collapse in 1967. Terrell's illness was at first downplayed by Motown record publicity machine, while new material by the duo of Gay and Terrell was being released. Many of the singles released under their names were created by laying down Marvin Gaye's vocals over the existing recording of Terrell made prior to her illness. Gaye scored one of his biggest solo hits during this period with I Heard It Through the Grapevine, but following Terrell's death in 1970, he stopped performing live for the next three years. I want to thank you for watching today. And as always, stay safe and stay blessed. And remember to smile because I love you. But more importantly, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, loves you the most. And remember, I go live at 5, 5 Central, every Saturday night. 
and we always have fun. We sometimes play trivia games. We some sometimes just chit chat for a couple hours. Sometimes we play other games. Um, this Saturday we might premiere a new game. So come on over and check out our lives. And um, if you like the content of this video, would you please give it a and comment down below and think about subscribing if you're not one of my serendipity subbies come on over and subscribe i have other videos i do these history videos every morning i do vlogging with family i do ride-alongs i do hauls and i also do junk journal videos that's my passion um and um so come on over and check out some of my other videos all right everybody have a blessed day and I will see you in my next video. Bye, everybody.